for tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2016 Men's Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday, 115, October the 15th, 2016. Colonel Williams is the speaker of the service teaching on asthma, uncontrollable anger. You may be seated. First of all, giving honor to God, who's the, who's the blessed head of all our lives, and to His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Through the precious Holy Spirit. We want to thank Dr. Merrill, for the Merrill and the leadership of this house, another five-fold ministry gifts, that uh, God is using to keep Lake Hamilton setting captives free. Isn't that good? Well, that's good to give Jesus Christ a praise. Come on. Give him a praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have so much I want to share with you today. Uh, let's pray. Holy Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God will be upon me. The Word of the Lord will go forth, will be released among the people in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, O oh Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, that Lord, the Holy Spirit will quicken many hearts until this message that you, you released uh, into my heart to give to the people. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that this word will go forth and it will be a blessing to others as they witness, as they minister to others, Father. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. How many of you are blessed by uh, Randy? Brother Randy. How many of you are blessed by him? And, amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Nikki. Um, I was certainly blessed. And I hope many of you. And even the praise and worship for yes. Pastor. <laughs> amen. amen. Thank God for him. He blessed me so. And even ministering with him today was such a blessing. Amen. Well, let's move right along. Turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 33. The book of Job, chapter 33, please. The book of Job, chapter 33. Let's look at verses 15 through, through 18. The book of Job, chapter 33, verses 15 through 18. Verse 15, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. One may hear God's voice in a dream in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men while slumbering upon the bed. Verse 16, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, terrifying them with warnings. Verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and cut off pride from him, disgusting him with his own disappointing self-sufficiency. He holds him back from the pit of destruction and his life from perishing by the sword of God's destructive judgment. Now look at verse 19 closely. God's voice may be heard by a man when he is chasing with pain upon his bed and with continual strife in his bones while all his bones are firmly set. Now, in verse 16, the, the word of the Lord says, He opens the ears of men and seals or gives them instruction. I always pray, Father, give me instruction what you want me to bring to the people. I had a dream, and in that dream, I had that dream uh, maybe about a week ago, and in that dream, I was at Lake Hamilton, and Sister Patty came up to me in the dream, and she had some papers in her hand, and she said to me, Brother Colonel, I want you to minister on anger. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She said, Brother Colonel, she handed me these papers and these documents, and she said, I want you to minister on anger. 
So how many of you know that you must be obedient to the Holy Spirit? Amen. You're asking God for instruction, and when God gives you instruction, when He wants you to give the people, then, then you must be obedient. Amen? But before we get to that ang- anger, or get to that subject, turn with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Before we do anything, we must realize that Jesus Christ has the preeminence. Is that right? Let's look at the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. He is also is the head of his body, the church, seeing he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place, stand first, and be what? Preeminent. So we recognize Jesus' lordship, his authority, we recognize his what? His preeminence. Now I want to show you something else. Before we get started, look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. Notice that Matthew, even before he started the gospel, he recognized Jesus Christ's preeminence. Look at verse 1. The book of the ancestry of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the son, the descendant of David, the son, the descendant of Abraham. How many of you know, realize that before we go forth, we must recognize Jesus Christ's preeminence? Is that right? Amen. Amen. Well, give the Lord another praise then. Amen. All right. Now we can get started. All right. We're using on a subject today, and I'm going to spell this word. It's A-E-S-H-M-A, Ashima. There are different pronunciations, but... Let's go with Ashima. It's A-E-S-H-M-A. And Ashima is a rule of spirit of uncontrollable anger that resides in men. Let me say that again. Ashima is a rule of spirit of uncontrollable anger that resides where? In men. America's anger at this time is dangerous. Listen to this. Anger in America is dangerously high. And this came out of KnoxvilleNews.com by Ina Hughes. Anger in the supermarkets. Anger in the parking lots. Anger in political conversations about the election. Anger in the church. Anger among believers. Anger among Christians. Anger among educators. And anger among parents. Students are angry. Police are angry. Medical professionals are angry. Conservatives are angry. Liberals are angry. White Americans are angry. African Americans are angry. Latino Americans are angry. The rich are angry. The poor are angry. People with health care, Obamacare, are angry. People without health care are angry. Voters and non-voters are angry. In the final analysis, America is under a spell of uncontrollable anger. I want to use as a subject, Aishima, which is a rule of spirit, or an end time spirit of uncontrollable anger that resides in man. I went to www.cultopedia.com. That's www.cultopedia.com. I found out that Ashima is the demon of wrath, rage, fury, and violence. Now look at those ingredients that could operate in a man. Wrath, rage, fury, and violence. 
Ashima in occult areas is the most fiercest demon of anger because when it manifests, it will manifest uncontrollable anger. And it's a very fierce spirit. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verse 1 through 5. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verses 1 through 5. The Bible says in the Amplified in verse 1, But understand this, that in the last days will, will come, said in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Look at verse 2. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an ordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Now look at verse 3 real closely. They will be without natural affection or human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truths or appeasement, they will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce. Now here's Ashima. Uncontrolled and what? Fierce. Haters of good. Now there's your word Ashima in verse 3. Uncontrollable and what? Fierce. Look at verse 4. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Now look at verse 5, please. For although they hold a form of piety or true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession, Avoid all such people. The Bible says what? Turn away from them. Ashima is responsible for national aggression. I went to the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, and I also found that Ashima, again, is the demon of wrath, indignation, ire, fury, vengeance, rage, and resentment. Rage in Hebrew means to grind or gnash the teeth. Violent anger accompanied with fierce words or torment or loud uh, lament type words. Fury and extreme violence. Ashima has another name which is the bloody mace. Bloody mace. This is a spirit that operates in men that will not stop its aggression until somebody is bleeding or until somebody is near death. Now the more we identify this spirit, it sounds like the streets of America. Hello, saints of God. The more we identify this strong man, this end time ruler spirit, who has another name, another epithet, by the name of bloody mace. In other words, it works through violence to turn its victims into a bloody mace. I see many men, many times, who are professing believers. They can't control that anger. There's hidden anger. There's hidden fury. There's hidden rage. How many times have we counseled men who and worship in the house of the Lord, who sing the songs of the Lord, but they go home and Ashima manifest, and they beat their wives to a bloody mace. How many times have you seen men in the house of the Lord, when they fellowship or inter interact in the streets of this nation, as soon as they get upset, they, there's uncontrollable anger that begins to manifest, and they're ready to fight and even beat their victim into a bloody mace. For the Spirit of the Lord to give me this Spirit in a dream, that means that the Spirit of God wants that Spirit dealt with today. How many of you are with me here? 
Turn to Proverbs chapter 6. The book of Proverbs chapter 6. Let's look at verse 32 and 34. The book of Proverbs chapter 6. Let's look at verse 32 and 34. Please. Verse 32 says, But whosoever commits adultery with a woman lacks hard understanding, moral principle, and prudence, and he who does it is destroying his own life. Verse 33, Wounds and his grace will he get, and his reproach will not be what? Wiped away. Look at verse 34. For jealousy makes the wrong man furious. Ashima is also so tied with rage and fury and jealousy. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance upon the detected one. Ashima manifests rage and jealousy and fury and even to the point of murder or even to the point of death. I looked at the Jewish Encyclopedia, which is jewishencyclopedia.com. Here's my time. Ashima is designed to stir the hearts of men to do evil. It's an end-time spirit that will seek to stir the hearts of men to do evil. And this is in jewishencyclopedia.com. Ashima is a demon of anger and revenge and retaliation. Ashima seeks to keep men from holiness. Now that's a, that's a very strong area right there. How many of you know that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord? Is that correct? So this spirit, it stirs the hearts of men to do evil, and this spirit will do all it can to keep the man of God from walking in holiness. Hello, saints. And many times we hear messages, but we hear messages, we hear doctrine, we hear sound doctrine. But it seems as though in these end times that holiness is not being taught and holiness is not being preached. Amen. And I believe by faith that without holiness, no man shall what? See the Lord. The Lord. I went to Encyclopedia Mythica. And I found out that Ashima Deva, D-E-D-A-E-V-A, Ashima Deva, is also a demon of madness in men, mental illness in men, wrath and revenge. It's a spirit that's very retaliatory. I'm going to get you for what you did to me. Ashima's wrath is directed to uncontrollable anger, and it stirs up rage and bloody violence in men. Now, we've looked at Octopedia.com, we've looked at Wikipedia.com, we looked at JewishEncyclopedia.com, we looked at Mythical.com. And here's the narrative that we have on this spirit, this end time spirit Ashima that dwells and operates and stirs the hearts of men. He is a spirit of wrath, rage, fury, and violence. Uncontrollable anger, Aggression, malice, war, and here's one I forgot. Drunkenness. Forgot that one. Resentment and physical abuse. And remember, according to Jewish demonology, Ashima has an epithet or a nickname of bloody mace. Uncontrollable anger will beat its victims till they're bloody or beat their victims to a cause. Alright? It stirs up the hearts of men to hinder them from holiness. It stirs up anger in men, uncontrollable anger in men for men to do violence. Alright? It manifests mental illness as well as what? Insanity. I want to say to every man that's here today, let a man examine himself. I've seen some men who look nice and look quiet and silent, but if you push the hot button, you would see the manifestation of Ashma. You would see uncontrollable anger and even to the point of rage or fury, that spirit will begin to manifest. How many times that I've been in churches where the deacons are slug fisting? Somebody comes in the church and threatens the leadership of the house with a gun. How many times I've seen, I'm not going to call any church's name. 
even in the latter area. But one of the deacons came in and gunned the man down right in the midst of the congregation because he thought he was he was uh, having an adulterous affair with his wife. We are going to have to deal with that anger. We're going to have to deal with Ashima in these end times. We're going to have to say to ourselves, God, if it's there, I need deliverance. I need healing. Turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14. Let's look at verse 16 and 17. Proverbs, chapter 14. Let's look at verses 16 and 17. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Verse 16, A wise man suspects danger and cautiously avoids evil, but the fool bears himself instantly and presumptuously confident. Now look at verse 17 real closely. He who phones up quickly, phones up quickly. How do you phone up? <laughs> he who phones up quickly and flies into a passion deals foolishly. And a man of wicked plots and plans is hated. Anybody here ever seen, seen anybody fall him up? Ashma. Look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 14. Look at verse 29. Verse 29 says, He who is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who is hasty of spirit exposes and exalts his folly. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. And I'm speaking to the men here. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. You know, in counseling sometimes, I, I see so many married couples, and it's so elementary. She won't let me talk. I got my rights too. She says something to me, I'll say something to her. Come on, man, you're supposed to be a mature man. You're supposed to be the wise man of the house. You know? You know, and you I've seen grown men. They don't know what a soft ass is. A man. Tell me what to do. I see it all the time. Look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 15. Let's look at verse 18. I love this one in the Amplified. A hot tempered man stirs up strife. But he who is slow to anger appeases contention. I have learned over the years that most angry men that I knew, it affected their reins or their kidneys in some areas. Not always the case. But usually when I see a, a man with kidney problems, and listen, listen, and I say this out of love humbly, if you're battling in that area, it may not be the case with you. But I've seen men who have lived most of their life angry, mad, can't hold a decent conversation without being hot tempered. Turn to Proverbs chapter 16. Let's look at verse 32. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. Look at Proverbs chapter 17. Let's look at verse 26 and 28. Verse 26 says, Also to punish or find the righteous is not good, nor to smite the noble for their uprightness. Verse 27, He who has knowledge spares his words. He who has knowledge spares his words. A man of understanding has what? A cool spirit. Now that's a blessing. A man of understanding has what? A cool spirit. Any man that cool in their spirits? Look at verse 28. Even a fool when he holds his peace is considered wise. My brother, brother Nicky was talking about some, some of those things uh, it was yesterday, I think. It was yesterday. Amen. Even a fool when he is holding, holds his peace is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is esteemed a man of understanding. The Lord wants some wise men. It's a cool spirit. Is that correct? The Lord wants men of understanding, not men bound by Ashma. Okay? Look at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. 
Verse 3 says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife and keep a low from it. But every fool will quarrel or every fool will, will want to argue. How many of you have family members that can't hold a conversation unless they argue? How many of you have friends that can't hold a conversation unless they quarrel? I know married couples that can't hold a conversation with their wife or with their husband unless there's an argument. Look at verse 25. Proverbs chapter 25, correction. Let's look at verse 28. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. He who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So I, how many of you met men? They have no rule over their spirit. Now, I've been in law enforcement. When you pull a car over, it can go from, from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Sir, I need to see your driver's license insurance card rest first, please. Yes, sir. She exits the vehicle, please. All of a sudden, what's your what's stopping me for? Who do you think you are to give you people in these uniforms? Here we go. Okay, sir, all I asked you was your driver's license registration. Call me up then. Okay? So it can go from zero to 100. And we know, I know, believers, thanks to God. Professing believers, it can go from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. And these same people say that they love Jesus. Look at Proverbs chapter 29. Let's look at verse 11. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. If a ruler listens to correction, verse 11, a self confident fool utters all his anger. <laughs> But a wise man holds it back and steals it. For God to give me a dream and have Patty, Sister Patty, come to me in a dream and hand me some papers and say, I want you to talk about anger. And this message came from a dream. Sister Patty giving me papers. I believe by faith that, that there are some of us sitting here, and I say this humble to you, and very humble to you, you're dealing with asthma, you're dealing with uncontrollable anger, and you're trying to hide. I believe by faith for the Spirit of God to give me that dream. God wants you delivered from that. God wants you set free from that. For you to step in your destiny. Amen? Amen, it's awfully quiet. Is everybody okay? Do you love Jesus? Do you love me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love you, brothers. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. 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 That's right, brother Mary. You know, I might not be the proper d delivery person, the messenger person, but I'm doing what the Spirit of God gave me instruction. He said, deal with uncontrollable anger. You know what? And I'm dealing. Uh, listen, we're talking about. People who have such uncontrollable anger that they will beat a person to a bloody mace because the name of this spirit is bloody mace. Right. Hello, saints. I've seen things. I've gotten called. And, and when you get a domestic violence call, listen, back in those days when you were called to domestic violence, everybody went to jail. I've seen situations where a man done bit the woman ear or chewed the ear. Hello? I've seen calls when you come into that house, how she calls you, and then when you want to arrest him, then next thing you know, you got to fight both of them because she can tell you, you didn't have to do it like that. Next thing you know, she's trying to pull your eyes out. Ashima wants violence, fury, rage, blood, division. And most believers are dealing with that. I'm not moved. I'm learning even in my own life. I have to examine myself. Listen, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I'm not moved by how loud a person sings in worship, or uh, how much a person shouts or dance all over the house of the Lord, how many scriptures that person can quote. Because I've seen this situation over and over again. When they go outside the house of the Lord, there's a fist fight, or there's a scuffle, or there's someone trying to resort to ashim or violence to do a gun battle. Holiness, holiness, holiness is being kept out of the house of the Lord. Jesus Christ has the preeminence. He's being, is being kept out of the house of the Lord. 
And as I told you earlier, I'm not going to minister about a demon until I recognize Colossians 1.18, that Jesus has the preeminence over all that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hello, saints. I'm talking to the man out here. Look at Proverbs chapter 29. Let's look at verse 22 and 23, and I love it. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and a man given to anger commits and causes much transgression. Look at verse 23. A man's pride will bring him low, but he who is of a humble spirit will obtain honor. Hello, saints. Hello, men of God. we got to deal with action. Turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 4. The book of Genesis, chapter 4. Let's look at verses 5 and 6, please. Genesis, chapter 4. Let's look at verses 5 and 6. Verse 5. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or regard. So Cain was exceedingly angry. There's your word. Ashima. He was exceedingly angry and indignant. He looked sad and depressed. Verse 6, And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why do you look sad? And why do you look depressed? Unrighteous anger, hear me out, saints of God, unrighteous anger can lead to curses and lead to sin. Look what the Word says. Cain felt rejection because the Lord had not accepted his offering. And Cain's sin of anger was rooted in that rejection. There are many men here. You may manifest actual uncontrollable anger and maybe soul time are rooted in the fact of rejection. You may feel like I've been rejected. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody understands me what I'm going through. I grew up as a child of rejection. My mother didn't love me. My father didn't, didn't love me. And then you get angry. And that's why many young men go out and join gangs. Ooh, I see where this is linked right up right now. Cain's anger caused the spirit of depression. His countenance fell. He was depressed. And I want to ask you, could it be when you say, I have this heaviness on me, I feel depressed, I feel sad all the time, could it be the fact that there's an anger root somewhere, or there's an anger soul tie somewhere, or that ash is somewhere hiding in the background? Man, this is good. Don't worry about it. Come on, saints of God. Quiet, Thank you, brother. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. I need it, brother. <laughs> Cain said of anger guess what else it did cause the curse I'm going to show you where anger can open your soul this realm up for a curse look at Genesis chapter 4 look at verse 10 and 12 verse 10 and the Lord said what have you done the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground verse 11 and now you are cursed there's your curse because of anger. By reason of the earth which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's shed blood from your hand. Now look at verse 12 real closely. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on earth. In petrol exile, a degraded what? Outcast. What was the manifestation of anger? It was being a fugitive. Being a Think upon. You will not prosper. There would be a poverty curse. The earth would not yield her strength. I don't know how old you, you are, but I'm going to Vietnam era. There was a movie I called The Fugitive where this man was always on the run. How many of you remember that? Yeah. We're not as old as I am. <laughs> he was running, you know? The vagabond curse, you're always running. House to house. Apartment to apartment, job to job, relationship to relationship, you can never get found it. Anger, look what it says, saints. That anger opened a portal for curses. That anger opened up the vagabond curse, saints. It opened up the heaviness and depression, a sad countenance. And not only did it do that, but anger leads to murder. 
I stand with an apostolic prophetic boldness to you men of God. God bless you, but you've got to deal with Ashima. You have to deal with that anger before you can go to the next level of the mention of God's authority and God's power. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Murder. His nickname or his epithet is Bloody Mace. There he is for Cain and Abel. Jealousy. Anger can lead to curses and it can lead to sins. You know, I have men say all the time, well, I got a little, a little, a little anger here. Okay, you got a little, little old bitty. He's just a little bitty one, little bitty spirit. Little bitty demon of anger, okay. Well, that demon can turn to a Tyrannosaurus Rex or a Diplodocus or a Brontosaurus if you don't deal with that situation. Hello, saints. Turn to the book of Genesis chapter 39. The book of Genesis chapter 39. I don't know about you, but I threw a fire in the book, the Holy Spirit fire. I'm like, oh God, all you gave me was a dream. <laughs> all right, in Genesis chapter 39, let's look at verses 16 to 20. Verse 16, And she laid up his garment by her until his master came home. Then she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought among us came to me to mock and insult me. And when I screamed and cried, he left his garment with me and fled out of the house. Verse 19, when Joseph master heard the words of his wife, saying to him, this is the way your servant treated me, his wrath or his anger was kindled. And Joseph master took him and put him in a prison place where the state prison was confined. So he was there, it says, so he was there and what? In a prison. She devised, how many of you know the story about Joseph and Potiphar? Mm -hmm. She devised a scheme, a scheme of lies to get back at Joseph. <coughs> Potiphar's anger blinded him from the truth. So it is safe for me to say that an anger man is blinded by the truth. A man that is angry, you can't see spiritual things because your anger is furious and, and, you, and you've been what? Blinded to the truth, to reality. Anger can lead to not only bloodshed and murder, but it can lead to lies and deception. When I was a young boy, my uncle used to say, Son, if you lie, you steal. Lust and lies led to anger. How many of you men have ever been in a situation? No, I won't say that. I'll just say this. Let me, let me take first grade, basic elementary. How many of you have ever been in a situation where somebody lied on you? And then you manifest it. You got angry. Is that right? Because you knew it was a lie. Hmm? Okay? Alright. So we see that anger can also cause what? Lies. And it can cause what? Deception. Now, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Let's look at verse 8 and 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Look at verses 8 and 9. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Now look at verse 9 with Hosea. Do not be quick in spirit to be angry or vexed. For anger rested in the bosom of a fool. Anger rested where? In the bosom of, of a fool. I found out in the Lewis ministry, many times the spirit of anger will lodge in the bosom. I've heard many deliverers ministers say, well, well, in the breast, there's a little spirit in the breast, but anger can lodge in the breast. Okay? Anger can also be a, not only an emotion, it can be identified as a spirit, as a, as a strong man. Look what it says right here in verse 9. Do not be quick in spirit to be angry or vexed, for anger and vexation lodges in the bosom of a fool. I haven't gotten into the manifestation of anger. I haven't gotten into the strokes and the aneurysms yet and the feet problems because of anger, but I'm going to get there. Anger can go, cause you to go into a psychotic fit. I don't believe in psychiatric stuff. The psychiatrists say when you're angry and you go into a rage, that's borderline insanity. Brother, you have stepped off on the deep end. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Let's look at verses 24 and 28. Let's look at King Saul's first 
psychotic fit of anger and rage. In verse 24 it says, And Saul said to Samuel, I, I have sinned and I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Verse 25, Now I pray you pardon my sin and go back with me that I may worship the Lord. Verse 26, And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Now watch verse 27 real closely. And as Samuel turned to go away, Saul seized the skirt of Samuel's mantle, and it tore. Verse 28, And Samuel said to him, Okay, you went into a psychotic fit. You went into a psychotic rage. Look what it says in verse 28. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is what? Better than you. King Saul manifested Asherah. King Saul manifested what? Uncontrollable anger. You don't see the matter of the skirt of the prophet. And it tore and ripped the prophet's gone. And the prophet turned around and prophesied to him. What did he say to him? The Lord has told the kingdom to you just like you told my God, told my man. Anger can cause a psychotic fit, it can cause rage, and it can cause insanity. And many of you know the scriptures in Galatians 5, you don't have to turn there. Anger can also be a work of the flesh. Hello, saints. We're going to have to get rid of that anger. King Saul anger for David lasted for years until King Saul died. He had a lifelong obsession with destroying David because of anger and jealousy. Here we go again. Anger, uncontrollable anger, it can obsess you to the point of spirit of competitive jealousy will begin to manifest to the point where it will lead to, to bloody mace, to blood lust to death and to murder and to rape and, and to even anger. We're going to have to deal as believers with this uncontrollable anger that may be hiding on the inside of you. I've heard people tell me, well, I don't take nothing from nobody. My daddy didn't play. Generation of curse didn't with your dad. My mother didn't play nothing. Generation of curse with your mom needs to be broken. And you need deliverance. Amen. I hear that all the time. Somebody hit me, I'm going to hit them back. There's fire burning in this house. Ah, I'm, ah. <laughs> uh, two years ago, there was a woman, I'm not going to call any names. They called me at the hospital and said they were about to take her up to the village. I said, What's wrong with her? She said, They said she lost her mind. I said, well, What's wrong with <laughs> They said she's an angry woman. Hello. Hello, thanks to God. Said she was an angry woman, and not only that, she was always going to see the psychic, the witch, the fortune teller, the medium. So she had that anger tied up with idolatry. She had that anger tied up with the occult. Okay? God spoke to Saul. And one of the reasons why uh, his transgression was that he went to see a witch. And God would not even speak to him anymore in dreams and visions. How many of you remember that scripture? And on top of that, Saul was an angry man with psychotic fits and he had an obsession, but he was trying to act religious. Oh my God, man. If you're not tired, can we turn to First Chronicles chapter 10? Can we turn to First Chronicles 10, please? Okay, first Chronicles chapter 10. <clears throat> Let's look at verse 13. Saul died for his transgression against the Lord in sparing Amalek for his unfaithfulness and not keeping God's word, and also for consulting a medium with a spirit of the dead. Or God's anger was kindled against him because he went to see a witch. I want to say to you men. When you get depressed and you get sad and you feel you're not hearing from God, don't let the devil fool you to go see Madam Ruby or Sister Alice, the tarot card reader, or, or Sister Susie. 
You're crystal ball only because you're only activating what? Acres. Okay? All right. So far, we see that anger can be destructive. So far, we see that anger can open curses and anger can do what? Open you up for sin. And so far, we also see that, listen, a believer can harbor anger and act religious. Turn to Matthew chapter 5, please. Let's look at verse 22. Same Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at verse 22. What did Jesus say about that? But I say to you that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice, enmity of heart against them shall be liable to and unable to escape the punishment imposed by the court. Whoever speaks contemptuously and solely to his brother shall be liable to and unable to escape the punishment imposed by the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you cursed fool, you empty-headed idiot, shall be liable to and are able to escape the hell Gehenna of fire. This is what Jesus had to say about anger. How many of you still with me here? Amen? Amen? All right. Let me share something with you. I'm going to get back to some scriptures. It opens the door to the root of bitterness, too, by which many are defiled. Thank you, brother. Yes, yeah, say it again, brother. Anger opens the door to the root of bitterness, which the Bible says, by which many are defiled. Which many are what? Many defiled. are defiled. That's right, brother. The brother said that anger opens the door to the root of bitterness where many are the what? Defiled. How many of you with that? All right, let's keep going. Let me give you some more scripture, please. Let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 16. Let's look at verses... Let's look at verse 7. Starting at verse 7. Uh, better than that, let's start at verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro thee throughout the whole earth to show itself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless toward him. You have done fools in this, therefore from now on you shall have wars. Now look at verse 10 closely. Then Asa, or King Asa, was angry with the seer, put him in prison in the stock, for he was enraged with him because of this. Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. All right. Asa got angry with Hananiah the seer. He did not want to hear the word of the Lord. And I want to show you something that happened with that anger. Okay? Let me show you what happened with that anger. Look at verse 12. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa was diseased in his feet. Until his disease became very severe, yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but relied on the physicians. In other words, he didn't want to hear anything that the seer had to say. He was in rebellion. He got mad. He got angry. He got upset. And not only that, he did not seek the Lord, but he relied on the physicians. And guess what happened? A foot disease. Now, if I stand on the word of the Lord, and I look at Asa, and I look at, don't turn there, Michael chapter 6, verse 13, where the Lord told Israel, he said, because of your rebellion, I made you sick as a nation. And when I look at that anger, can anger be an open portal for people? <laughs> in preparing this message, I did a test with someone that I know as people, you know what? And I asked her, I said, why are you so angry? She said, people just makes me mad. I'm annoyed by people, people, people. And her feet were swelling up. And the first thing I said, the Lord told me that Asa, King Asa was diseased in his feet. Because of that anger. And then I began to realize that anger can cause a stroke. Anger can cause an aneurysm. Hello? High blood pressure. If it's not generation of of infirmity, if it's not a high sodium intake salt, it, it can be anger. A doctor told me at the VA hospital one time, he said, son, the older you get, 
Your blood pressure rises. And this doctor has sits and looks to him. You know, you know, you got to get rid of him, girl. Look at him like, my God. God is speaking to him. You know, to the doctor, man. Good job. If anybody's struggling with high blood pressure, could it be the result that you're angry about something? You still got a soul tie? You felt rejected? Hmm? Hello? Could it be that, 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 listen, you're holding on to hidden anger? Could it be that you have uncontrollable anger? Could it be that you're a violent type person? You know, hello, how many times you hear believers? They don't, don't, they don't want to push the wrong button with me. They don't want to rub me wrong now. They have to call the police right here if I show out. Could it be that some of the, listen, the battles that you're dealing with, can it be the result of anger? Listen to this. Areas of diseases of the feet and leg, peripheral artery disease, disorders of the spine, fracture tumor, disc bone disease, degenerative joint disease, weakness and numbness in the feet, damage and injury to the structures of the feet. Feet problems. Could it be? Anger can blood disorders, diabetes affects the feet. Could there be a connection with the diabetic spirit and anger when it comes to the feet? Hello, saints. There's a lot here we need to look at. We already mentioned hypertension and, and uh, uh, aneurysm. What about emotional disorders? Can anger be connected with anxiety, depression, fear, bipolar affective disorders? And you get mad, and, and an actual start manifesting, your whole body metabolism goes in overdrive. Oh, somebody smiles and says, Brother, I bless you, man. Teach the word, everybody. <laughs> what about anger and heart disease? Jesus said men's hearts were filled because of fear. You go to the average doctor right now, he'll tell you, uh, stress, anxiety, and fear can affect the heart. What about heart problems? Pulmonary heart disease. Other different forms. Chronic or uh, rheumatic heart disease. What about anger? Like the woman in Atlanta. Sold out. Listen, mental illness. There was a connection with idolatry and with that anger. I'm mad at my ex-wife. I'm still angry with my ex-husband but there's no women in there I'm upset the way I was fired off that job they did me wrong that preacher he looks at everybody but me he puts everybody in position but me I'm mad you know you got some believers who look just like the Hulk you, you wouldn't like me you, you. <laughs> when the Hulk was say, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry <laughs> I'm <gonna> turn green <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello, saints. We listen. We're pulling at something here. Pulling at something here. What are you angry about? Anger is not the way. How many times have they told the young men they shot my my brother down? Me and my homies, we getting together, my buddies, and we're gonna do a drive by. Hello, saints. I hear it all the time. I'm angry at the politician. What are you going to do about it? Brother, pray, pray, brother. That's all I'm going to do. Brother. Pray. See God's face, man. Turn this nation around. Hmm? Great is he that sent me to meet us in the world. Our weapons of our warfare are not come of a mind through God to the public. That was strong on us, man. To get rid of anger. I'm transparent. But my stepdaddy would beat my mother to a bloody mace. And I've got to be 17. Listen, I had murder in my heart. I said if he hit her again, somebody going to jail. And he hit her one day and knocked her flat down on the floor. And I was 17 and I lost her. I walked out the door and went in the Marine Corps. Was I bitter? Did I have a root of bitterness for him? Yes, I did. I hated that man almost 20 more years before he did to my mother. Somebody, somebody can, you all right, brother? <clears throat> I'm trying to speak to somebody here. I'm trying to hammer away at somebody. Saints, I, I, I grew up in violence. I, I'm transparent, I'm not ashamed. When he knocked my mother down, let me use some wisdom when I say, 
I did the smack down, the people's elbow, the rock bottom. He went to get a 44 Magnum, he was going to shoot me. I walked out the back door, I did not run. And I went down to the U.S. Marine recruiter with tears in my eyes, and, and they told me, what's wrong, son? I told them what happened. They said, well, you want to be a Marine? I bit the hook <laughs> to get out of that man's house. Somebody here. Maybe you still hold an anger the way that spouse that had done you as a man. Man, you got yourself in debt with the house, with the finances. You went overboard to help her family. Man, she just walked out and left you holding the bag. It's time for you to give that thing to Jesus. Amen? All right. Let me give you a few more scriptures. Turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 7. This is what this camp is about. Deliverance. All right? Turn to Psalms, chapter 7. Let's look at verses 11 and 14. God is angry with sin every day. Look at Psalm chapter 7, verse 11. God is a righteous judge. Yes, a God who is indignant every day. Verse 12. If a man does not turn and repent, God will wet his sword. He has strung and bent his huge bow and made it ready by treading it with his foot. He has prepared for him deadly weapons. He makes his arrows fire and shell. Behold, the wicked man conceives iniquity and is pregnant with mistress and gives birth to what? Lies. God is holy. And he is just to be angry with the wicked every day. God's anger is not wrong. God's anger is based on justice. Now that's well said. God's anger is not wrong. God's anger is based on what? Justice. God is a holy God, and He's angry and indignant with the wicked every day. And listen, when I read that scripture, that tells me that that is a form of God accepting anger. Turn to Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek, gentle, kind, and humble above all the men where on the face of the earth. Does everybody see that God saw Moses as a kind man, a humble man, a very meek man. Does everybody see that? Well, watch this. Turn to the book of Exodus chapter 11. Let's look at verse 4 and 8. Verse 4, And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt. Verse 5, And all the firstborn in the land, the proud hope and joy of Egypt shall die, die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the maid servants behind the handbill and the firstborn of beasts. Look at verse 6. And there shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as never been or ever shall be again. Look at verse 7. But against any of the Israelites shall not so much as a dog move his tongue against a man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and Israel. Now watch verse 8 closely. And, I, and all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out. And all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth, but Moses was angry with sin. Moses was angry with sin. And look what the Bible says. He spoke with great anger in his interaction with, 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 with Pharaoh. I looked up the word great anger, and I found something in Hebrew. And it says, great anger in Hebrew means fierce, great heat, heat of anger, a burning anger. Because Moses was angry with sin. In other words, he was blazing hot with sin. The Bible says that be angry, but sin not. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So that means that that anger can also go into another dimension. Actual uncontrollable anger can be the cause of his ground of depression in men. Actual can disrupt marital relationships through anger. I've seen a lot of wives tell me they can't deal with their husband because they're angry, they get mad, and start throwing pots and pans and dishes and threatening them with self threats. It can anger can disrupt other relations. Anger can affect your thinking and your behavior patterns. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
not only can it cause physical problems, but anger is led, led to crime, emotional abuse, and violent behavior. Anger is all works. It also can work from passwords and guilt, and it, which causes you to erupt into anger. Now there are about four more scriptures I'm going to give you. It didn't take you long to give you this word. Is that right? All right. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. That's kind of a new Bible. I got to learn to flip it around. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is all able to understand and sympathize and have shared feelings with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the source of temptations, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, but yet without what? Sin. Jesus was angry at times, but yet without what? Sin. I had a theologian tell me one day, well, if Jesus was well, 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 so I said, why did he go in and get a whip and beat, and, and beat the money changers down? I said, Jesus was Jesus. <laughs> he was angry, brother. And what I'm saying, that's how I'm going to stand on it. Right there, right there. Hey, brother, he said he only did what the Father showed him. Come on, brother. That's Come on. What the Father showed him to do that. Come on. Thank you. Should have had you there when he was trying to school me. <laughs> 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 hey, Thank you, Randy. All right. <clears throat> Ephesians 426. Hmm? Okay, Ephesians 4 and 26. Man, you know you have fun in the Lord. Amen. Ephesians 4, look at verse 26. When angry, do not sin. Do not let your wrath, your aspiration, your exasperation, your fury, or indignation last until the sun goes down. Look at verse 27. So leave no such room or give a foothold to the devil. Don't give him no what? Opportunity. The way you handle anger reflects your attitude in Christ. Now that's well said. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Some people do reveal anger with an attitude that reflects the devil. Yes. All right. Let's look at. Uh, that's gonna be your last verse right there. Philippians chapter two and five. Philippians chapter two and five. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in what? Humility. Does everybody see that? Let him be your example in what? In humility. Now, what did we cover? Here's what we covered. We talked about that we're a nation, but America's anger is becoming dangerous. We identify many areas of Oshima, which is spread of wrath, rage, fury, and violence. Uh, it hinders men from going in holiness, or it stirs men's hearts to do evil. Okay? We also talked about uh, aggression, malice, drunkenness. We talked about uh, anger can lead to madness, mental illness, sanity, aneurysm, stroke, heart attack, feet problems, uh, did I miss one? Um, emotional disorders. Um, uh, we also... T heart problems, kidney problems. Kidney problems is good. The lady, I remember the lady, the rings are called kidneys in the Bible. She had, uh, she was a woman with uh, so much hatred and anger to the point of affecting her kidneys. Um, uh, not always the case, but that's a good area to look for in deliverance. We also talk about anger can lead to murder, pain, jealousy, competitive, competitive jealousy. We talked about uh, uh, revenge, retal being uh, retaliatory. Uh, we also talked about we talked about a lot of stuff. How about that? <laughs> Let's do it that way. We, we talked about a lot of things. Now, I did not cover everything. Because I just feel in my heart that's good enough. You know, for what the Lord wanted to, to give you. But I really believe by faith this came through, through a dream. And I believe that, that the Spirit of God touched the hearts of many men in here. And I pray that the Holy Spirit has brought conviction, conviction on many of you that are here. Now, 
Uh, we've seen deliverance. Uh, these men of God have been tremendous. Uh, they've been, been, been used mightily of the Lord. But let's begin to step into that reign or, or to that dimension right now. Okay? Of deliverance. Of Ashima and uncontrollable anger. Okay, but first of all, uh, let me just take authority and then I'm going to lead you to repentance and renunciation. Okay? All right, we're right now, Father, we just bind the presence of God and powers in the heavenly satanic thrones and satanic dominions. We bind them in Jesus Christ's name. And Father, we pray for legions of holy angels. Legions of holy angels to, to interact with God, with the saints of God, to bring deliverance, to bring healing uh, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for an increased presence of your Holy Spirit. Without your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing, Father. And we pray, Lord, for a cloud of glory to begin to manifest in this place unprecedented we pray for an uh, uh, intense level of your presence to come and set the captives free whom you love Father in the name of Jesus abide in the satanic reinforcements abide in any spirits that are operating beneath our feet right now in the name of Jesus Christ and I seal every door to do the power and to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I want all heads bowed right now all heads bowed anybody living or dead that you held anger for uncontrollable anger, anybody living or dead. I feel the presence of God stirring already. Anybody living or dead, if you held any type of anger for her, you're going to have to forgive them. You're going to have to forgive them and release them. Anybody living or dead that you held any hatred, anger, bitterness, or resentment for, that you've gotten in any, it came close to murder, it came close to you going to prison or going to jail. It came close to, to marital disruption, marriage disruption. Uh, it came close to a fist fight. Uh, anybody living or dead, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to help you search your hearts right now. I'm just basic stuff that I'm doing right now. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes right now. Father, we just pray for a cloud of glory. We're in the end times, O Lord. We're in your time. God, we pray for an intense presence, the weight of your glory, the weight of your glory in this house, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And God, I just thank you for that word on, on Ashma, the uncontrollable aim, God. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, that let us be a peculiar people. Let us be strange people. Oh, God, let us move in the manifestation of your power, oh God. In the name of Jesus, right now. Okay? I'm going to give you a few more minutes. Is that all right? Yeah, and after that, we're going to going to come against the synonyms and antonyms we're going to use in the area of anger alright there was some things that I didn't finish I missed but I pray that this will open you up to do your own study or do your own study about uncontrollable anger alright and I want you you, you know humbly uh, amen to listen as we go forward some of you have not raised up yet you're still praying and that's asking God Many of you already know the deliverance that we have someone get to you and be a blessing to you. All right, now, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, all right. I break all curses, generational curses of, of asthma, uncontrollable anger on the bloodline. And I break these, 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 these satanic cords over of your life of asthma in the name of Jesus. And, and I command those spirits to come out. Right now, and many of you already know demons can come out to the top of the head. They can come out eyes, ears, nose, uh, vomit, yawning, crying, come up to your feet. Or like Randy, Brother Randy said, cast some gas. Man. You know? All right. Well, get ready. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. I buy yeah. with anger, there's strangulation and convulsions. Yeah. I command strangulation and convulsions through anger come out of you now in Jesus Christ's name. Come out of you now in Jesus Christ's name. Ang angry, argumentative, battling, boxing, brawling, combative, right now in Jesus' name. Hostile, ferocious in Jesus' name. I want everybody to take a deep breath and breathe one time. Come on, come on. Bring them out of there. Family line curses of anger. Asthma, come on. Family line curses on your bloodline. Come on out of that, Asthma. Come on, give me one big call. Let's go. Let's get him running here. Here they go. Come on. Out of there. Out of there. Come on. Out of there. Out of there. Come on. Come on. Out of there. A family life curses of Ashman. Come on. Come out in Jesus Christ. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, with them that strive against me. Fight against them that fight against me. All right. Come on out of there now in Jesus' name. Madman. Animal. 
animals, gorilla, come on out of there now in Jesus' name. Uh, all family curses trying to flow up your bloodline. Come on, bring those things out of there in Jesus' name. Out of control, out of control, raging, shook up. Violent, weird. Come on out of there now in Jesus' name. Come on, come on out of there now. Come on, bring it up, sir. On your bloodline that's trying to flow through this year. Come on. Everybody will give him another big cross and push him up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Out of there. 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 Out of there now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray a release of holy fire. A release of holy fire. A release of holy fire to burn them out of there now in Jesus Christ's name. Angry, animal, ape, all bloodthirsty. Bloodthirsty. Your ancestors were angry. They were bloodthirsty. Come on. Come on. All the bloodthirsty spirits come out of there now. Come on. Bring them out, saints. Bring those spirits out of there. Come on. Father, let the holy angels come and drag them out. And bring them out with chains. Come on. Bloodthirsty. Bloodthirsty. Brutal. Brutish. Cutthroat. Cutthroat. Come up, cutthroat. Come up, cutthroat. Come up, cutthroat. Cutthroat. Come on out of there now in Jesus' name. Come on. Abusive father. Abusive father. Come on out of there now. Come on. All the hurt from the abuse of the father. Come out now in Jesus' name. All right. Cutthroat. Ferocious. For stormy, savage, terrible, threatening, uncontrolled anger. Let's go. Move. 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 Bring them out of there now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, bring them out of there now. Bring them out of there now in Jesus' name. All right. Hot buttons. There are some hot buttons. If a person push the wrong button, you will go off. I come against that spirit. Come out of there now. All the hot buttons. To go. Move. 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 A person push the right button. You will go off. Come on, bring them on out of there, people. Bring them out of there now. In Jesus' name. Venomous, vicious, wild, untamed, warmongering, wrestling spirit. Come on, wrestling spirit. Come out of there now. In Jesus' Christ's name. Arouse, curry, furious, on fire, negative fire, negative fire, negative fire in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, all right, there we go. All right, let's go again. I break all curses of drunkenness on the bloodline. All Ashima is connected with alcohol spirits. Come on. All the alcohol spirits. Let's go. In Jesus' name. Wine and liquor. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, wine. Wine and liquor. Come on, come on, come on. We're in the house of the Lord. We have fun. Come on, out of there. And defeat the enemy. Come on, out of there. Man of Come on. Run yet. Let's go. Move. Move, 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 in Jesus' name. I command you to go but Jesus Christ will send you. Okay, the curse of drunkenness with Ashima. Come on, out of there now, in Jesus' name. All right, come on, come on. Violence among family members. Brother beating brother and sister fighting sister. Come on, come on. I cut those curses off of you now, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let me have another list here. Come on. I come against hostile, militant. Oh, martial arts in the family. All the martial arts spirits. Come on out of there. Connect with Ashima. Come on. Come on. Kung Fu. Come on. Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Taekwondo. Pansudo. Come on. Out of there. There you go. Here they go. Come on out of there now. Come on out of there now. Jesus name. Tang Sudo. Kung Fu. Taekwondo. Come on out of there now. In Jesus name. Come on. Bring those things out of there now. I'll break all family curses right now. Martial arts. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Bring them out, saints. Bring those things out of there now. In Jesus Christ's name. All the rage spirits. You go into a rage. All the rage spirits. Come on. Go. 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 Come out of there now. Come out of there now. Rage connected with mental illness. Rage connected with insanity. Rage connected with mind control. Come on. Come on. Bring those things out of there now. In Jesus Christ's name. All right. All stubborn spirits. Where you're stubborn and you're trying to hide, come out of there now. Come on, come on. Out of there now. There you go. Stubbornness. Stubborn. Family line Christmas. Stubbornness. Come on, move. Move, 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 move. In Jesus Christ's name. Hardball. Harsh. Intolerable. Rugged. Thick skin. Thick skin. Stern. Come on out of there now. In Jesus' name. Unsympathetic. Vengeful, come out now in Jesus Christ's name. Yeah. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. 
Okay, let me try one more area. God is moving. God is good. Okay, in the name of Jesus. All right, here we go. All the wrath, rage, fury, violence. Come on, all the family men. Come on, out of the net in Jesus' name. Come on, aggression. Come on. Physical abuse. Physical abuse in the relationship. Come on, come on. Physical abuse, out of the net in Jesus Christ's name. Come on. I break the curse of asthma trying to steer you from holiness. I break the curse of asthma trying to stir your heart to do evil. When you hear this evil voice speak to you, come out of there now in Jesus Christ's name. Come on, bring those things out of there now in Jesus' name. All right. Strangulation. Strangulation at night. Convulsions at night. Come on, come on, out of there now in Jesus' name. Heart problems, all the heart spirits. With anxiety, with stress, with fear, with asthma, come out now in Jesus Christ's name. All right. All right. Well, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, God, for, for miracles. Yes. Deliverance is a miracle ministry. Yes, and we thank you for the apostolic prophetic miracles. And we thank you for the signs and wonders that's been wrought among these people. We thank you for deliverance in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, Lord, every area where the enemy had a habitation, that you would restore those areas with the image of Jesus Christ. Yes. The image of Jesus, the image of Jesus will be placed in, er in those areas where the enemy had a foothold or where the enemy had a habitation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind in a backlash right now. In Acts 16, when Paul cast the spirit of Python out, Lord, your word tells us that the men of the city, the demons moved upon the men of the city to beat Paul uh, and let him his dead. I bind in a backlash attacks on vehicles, finances, Paul relationships right now for any demonic attacks that will come against you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that Father God the blood of Jesus Christ will encircle them and encompass them will be their protection uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now Father we minister to you we bless you we praise you we exalt you we, we sanctify you with our words Lord we thank you for who you are you are holy God Jehovah Shama Jehovah Rohi Thank you for Adonai. Father, bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Now, everybody here, please just give Jesus a praise. Come on. Thank you. Don't go too far away because we have uh, another teaching at 3 o'clock. Uh, this was great teaching today. Amen. There was a time in my life where I had great anger and I had great wrath. And believe me, I could have killed somebody if it wasn't for a brother that saved my life and saved those that I was going after. I was delivered from that anger and that wrath, and I could stand here today. And some of you that are here today did not let go of some of your wrath that you have. I could feel it. But you held back. You're going, oh, I can't let this come out. I can't let these people know I'm like that. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you how I was. Great wrath. But praise God. He delivered me from that. He took it away from me. I was able to forgive those people. I was able to go to them and say, God bless you. I forgive you. May God bless you with everything he has. And I forgive you for the things you did to me. And I know... That you, once you ask forgiveness and you forgive those people that caused you harm, that that will be broken off of you like it was off of me. God had to do a heavy work on me, hard work. But I stand here today because the work that he did in me, I'm here right now. Otherwise, I would be dead. I would be dead. I had a death sentence on me because of the way I lived and the wrath that I had for other people. But he set me free, and he brought me to this day. I, I don't believe that I should be here. But God has called me to be here, to testify in my own life. My wife says, don't say too much. Don't tell her, don't say too much. If I can save one person, one person, telling them what God has set me free from in my own life, it'll be worth it. My whole life would be worth it to save one person in my life. So, 
We're going to dismiss now for a few minutes, and then we'll uh, have our next teaching at 3 o'clock. So, God bless you all. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.